blessed day our dear televiewers and subscribers of Teleturoan. It's me again, Sir Randolph and Cruz, your teacher presenter for today's episode. And today, we will discuss the formation of ions. And so at the end of the lesson, you are expected to be able to first, differentiate cations from anions. Second, explain how ions are formed. And third, write the name and symbol of the ion. And so let's begin. You may have heard about your mother telling you to drink oral rehydration salts. When you are experiencing diarrhea, to replenish the ions your body may have lost. Have you ever wondered what the things that your body may have lost? Or what are these oral rehydration salts contain that prevent you from being dehydrated every time you are having a severe cause, case of diarrhea? You may have also seen some electronic gadgets that shows Li ion on their battery packs. What does Li or lithium ion mean? This has something to do with ions. Ions are atoms that carry either a positive or a negative charge. These charges are a result of the atom losing or gaining electrons. Ions are either single charged atoms or simple ions or small charged molecules called polyatomic ions. Examples of simple ions are Na positive, Ca positive 2, Cl negative. Examples of some polyatomic ions are NH4 positive, CO3 negative 2, and OH negative. Positively charged ions are called cations, while negatively charged ions are called anions. For us to understand more about the formation of ions, let us discuss valence electron, electronegativity, and ionization energy. The valence electrons are the electrons found in the outermost shell of an atom. These are the electrons that are lost or gained in the process of forming ions. The valence electrons of an atom is reflected in its group number. Hence, carbon which belongs to group 4A has four valence electrons. Electronegativity, on the other hand, is the ability of an atom to attract electrons. Just always remember that the higher the electronegativity value of an atom, the higher it, its ability to attract electrons. In period 2 of the periodic table, fluorine is located at the rightmost part of the row. Hence, fluorine has the highest electronegativity value and it is the atom that is most likely to attract electrons. Thus, it has the highest tendency to gain electrons and become negatively charged. Generally, nonmetals are the ones that tend to gain electrons and become anions. Ionization energy is the energy required to pull or remove electrons from an atom. The lower the ionization energy value of an atom, the easier it is is to remove an electron from such an atom. In period 2 of the periodic table, lithium is located in the leftmost part of the row and is the element having the lowest ionization energy. Thus, it has the highest tendency to lose electrons and become negatively charged. Generally, metals are the ones that tend to lose electrons and become cations. Ions are formed when an atom loses or gains electron. Atoms need to lose or gain electrons in order to be stable. They become stable when their outermost shell or valence shell contains 8 electrons, which satisfies the octet rule. Atoms that lose an electron in its outermost shell carry a positive charge because by losing electrons, the number of positively charged protons exceed those of the negatively charged electrons. These are cations. On the other hand, when atoms gain electrons in its outermost shell, the number of their negative, uh, negatively charged electrons exceed those of the positively charged protons. Thus, 
they carry a negative charge. These are an ions. For us to illustrate atoms from, from their neutral state to their ionized state, we make use of the Bohr model of an atom. This is the illustration of fluorine in neutral state and fluorine in its ionized state or negatively charged. And this is how lithium looks in its neutral state and its ionized state or positively charged. And there you have it. Please stay tuned for the second part of our discussion on the formation of ions. We will be right back. Welcome back, my dear televiewers. Let us continue our discussion regarding the formation of ions. In many cases, the elements positioned on the periodic table may will help you to determine the kind of ion form, whether an ion or cation, and the size of the ionic charge. Look at the periodic table, starting with boron, which has an atomic number 5, and continuing downwards to the right to astatine with an atomic number of 85, there is a bold staircase shaped lined. Elements to the left of this line are metals and commonly form cations. Elements to the right of its line are nonmetals and commonly form anions. Some of the elements adjacent to the line are called metalloids. But this distinction doesn't help us, so don't concern with yourself with it. Starting on the left of the periodic table, we see groups labeled 1A, 2A, 3B, and so on. On some newer versions of the periodic table, the groups are numbered 1 to 18. I will use the older version and show the new group numbers in parentheses. The elements in any particular group tend to form ions with characteristic charges. Please note, some elements are capable of having a range of electrical charges and therefore form different ions. Group 1A elements form cations with positive one charge. Group 2A elements form cations with positive two charge. Group 3B through 2B are transition metals. These elements for cations having varying amounts of charge. Charges of positive 2 or positive 3 are common, but charges from positive 1 to positive 6 can be found. There is no simple way of accurately predicting the charges for these elements. Group 3A metals form cations with positive 3 charge. Please note that the first element in this group Boron is a nonmetal and typically doesn't form a cation. Group 4A metals form cations with positive 4 charge, although tin and lead can form cations having positive 2 charge. Generally, metals in this group are treated similarly to the B elements. The nonmetals, carbon and silicon, generally don't form cations. Group 5A nonmetals, nitrogen, phosphorus, form anions with a negative 3 charge. Arsenic anion has negative 3 charge but also forms cations with positive 3 or positive 5 charge. This mode behaves similarly to arsenic. Group 6 nonmetals form anions having negative 2 charge. Polonium, which has an atomic number of 84, forms only cations. Group 7A elements form anions having negative 1 charge. Group 8A, on the other hand, these are elements that are normally uncharged. This table summarizes the typical charges on anions and cations. Nomenclature of simple ions. There are only two rules for naming simple ions. Rule number one, Naming the element and adding the word ion forms the cation name. So Na positive is sodium ion. Ca positive 2 is calcium ion. 
AL positive 3 is aluminum ion. For transition metal, cut ions from groups 3B to 2B, the cut ion name is the name of the element plus the size of the ionic charge. For example, Fe positive 3 is iron 3 ion. Pb positive 2 is lead 2 ion. Rule number 2. The anion name is formed from the name of the element, but IDE replaces the normal ending in the element's name. So, Cl negative is the ion formed from chlorine and its name is chloride ion. N negative 3 is the ion formed from nitrogen and its name is nitride ion. S negative 2 is the ion formed from sulfur and its name is sulfide ion. Sometimes, the names of simple anions are given without ion. For example, chloride, nitride, sulfide. This table gives the names of common and simple anions. It is critically important that you distinguish between elements and the ions formed from the elements. An element and its ion are related, just as you and your parents are related. However, just as you and your mother are different people, an element and its ion are different chemical species, and they have different physical and chemical properties. Calling chloride chlorine or chlorine chloride is wrong, confusing, dangerous, and potentially lethal. Polyatomic ions. There are many polyatomic ions. There are only a few that are relatively common. This table gives you the most common polyatomic ions. You must memorize these polyatomic ions. Make sure you memorize the correct formula, the correct charge, and the name. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is a special case. Hydrogen can form a cation or H positive or an anion H negative. Generally, in combination with other nonmetals, hydrogen does not form ions. Hydrogen in water or H2O, ammonia NH3, methane, CH4, and millions of other compounds is neither a cation nor an anion. In a few compounds called acids, hydrogen forms hydrogen cations. In even fewer compounds is hydrogen present as the anion. And now let us see if you have learned something today. Let's have a short quiz. The direction is, write the symbol of the ion formed when Number 1. An aluminum atom loses 3 electrons. Number 2. A bromine atom gains 1 electron. How about for number 3? A chlorine atom gains 1 electron. Number 4, a zinc atom loses 2 electrons. Number 5, an iron atom loses 2 electrons. And now here are the answers. For number 1, the answer is Al positive 3. Number 2, Br negative. Number 3, Cl negative. Number 4, Zn positive 2. Number 5, FE positive 2. Thank you for your active participation. I hope that you learned a lot. This has been Randolph and Cruz of Padre Gregorio Chrysostomo Integrated School. Till our next episode of Depend Hour Teleturoan. Good day.